Hello everyone, it's Living Online here for Server Pro, and today I'll be thoroughly explaining features in the server.properties file. The server.properties file is the file that stores all of your server settings, including options to set what difficulty your server is on and the amount of max players allowed on a server. To find this file, firstly navigate to your server's control panel. If you're using a premium or pro plan, you can click on the link shown on your dashboard. That will get you directly into the file. However, if you're using a VPS plan, head to your service and then into the files tab. Scroll down and lastly double click on the server.properties file. Keep in mind the server.properties file is different for both Java and Bedrock. We've actually done a video on explaining Java Java server property, so if you're interested, make sure to click the link in the description. Now I'm going to show you some useful options you can tweak for your server. Primarily there is the server name option. This is where you can change the name of your server. Then there is the game mode option. This is pretty self-explanatory and you can change the value here to survival, creative or adventure. The force game mode option is similar. It lets you force a game mode upon a player using commands so they can't use slash game mode to change their game mode. Next, the difficulty option is pretty self-explanatory too. It sets the difficulty on the world so if you type in what value you want here, peaceful, easy, normal or hard, it'll be that difficult. Allow cheats is simple. If you set the value here to true, it means that cheats like commands can be used on your server. If it's set to false, commands like slash set time day will not work. Max players is the maximum number of players that can play on your server. For example, if you set the number here to 100, only 100 players will be able to enter your server so when it's full, no one else can join. Up next, we have the online mode. You can set this to true or false. If set to true, then all connected players must be authenticated to Xbox Live. This means that if you do not have a legitimate Minecraft account or if you have a cracked account, you will not be able to enter the server. For allow list, there are two values you can enter, true or false. It's important to note that allow list was changed. Previously, it was simply named whitelist. If this is set to true, then to be able to be connected to the server, the player must be listed on the allow list. We've actually made a video on how to list a player on the allow list for Bedrock, so if you're interested, make sure to click the link in the description. On the server port section, you can type in which port the server should listen to. This is helpful if you're running a VPS with multiple services. You just have to type in the port of the service you want to appear when a player joins the server. View distance is pretty simple. Too. The value you put here is the maximum number of chunks a player can see when looking around. For tick distance, the value you place here should be in the range of 4, 12 and so forth. Whatever value you put here is how many chunks away from a player the world will be ticked in. Player idle timeout can be super helpful in a busy server. The value you put here can be any non-negative number. Whatever number you put here means that after a player has idled for that amount of minutes, they'll be kicked from the server. Max threads is up next. Whatever value you put here will be the maximum number of threads the server will try to use. If set to zero or removed, then it will use as many as possible. Level name is basically the name of the world file that will show up on your server. Bedrock level is the defaultly generated world file when you boot up your server. You'll have to change the value here if you upload a different world file to make sure the server knows which world file to show up when you load into it. For example, if you uploaded a world save with the name Game Tester, you'll have to change the level name value to Game Tester. So then that save shows up on your server correctly. Level seed is the next feature. If left blank it randomizes the world seed. You can put any seed number here to generate that seed on your server. Default player permission level is the permission level for new players joining for the first time. The values you type here can be visitor, member and operator. Texture pack required can be set to either true or false. This means that if set to true it'll force players to equip the texture pack used in the current world when they enter the server. If set to false this won't happen. Content log files enabled can be set to true or false. If set to true, it logs content errors into a file. Next, compression threshold determines the smallest size of raw network payload to compress. You can use any value here between 0 to 65535. Compression algorithm determines the compression algorithm that will be used for networking. The allowed values are zlib or snappy. Server authoritative movement determines the server authoritative movement. The values that can be set here are client auth, server auth, and server auth with rewind. To know about what each value means, you should read the information below. Next up, player movement score threshold is the number of incongruent time intervals needed before abnormal behavior is reported. For example, if player movement surpass the threshold, when behavior is reported, it'll kick the player out of the server. From there, there is also the player movement action direction threshold feature. Any value from 0 and 1 is allowed here. 1 meaning that the direction of the player's view and the direction the player is attacking must match exactly. 0 meaning that two directions can differ up to 90 degrees. Player movement distance threshold and player movement duration threshold are both features disabled by server authoritative movement if set to a certain value. 
Correct player movements can be set to true or false. If set to true, then the client position will be corrected to the server's position if exceeding the threshold set in the previous threshold features. Penultimately, server authoritative block breaking can be set to true or false too. If true, the server will compute block mining operations in sync with the client so it can verify that the client should be able to break blocks when it thinks it can. Lastly, we have chat restriction. The allowed values are none, dropped and disabled. None is the default and represents regular free chat. Dropped means the chat messages are dropped and never sent to any client. Players receive a message to let them know that this feature is enabled. Disabled means that unless the player is an operator, the chat UI doesn't appear at all and no information is displayed to the player. Lastly, it's important to note that when making changes to any of these features values, you should press save file to confirm the changes. For a lot of features, restarting your server is also required, so make sure to do that too. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any more questions, make sure to leave them down below. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to see more from our channel. Thank you for watching.